we have an assumption of war. And when we say the word war and warrior and we close our eyes and think about what images come to mind, it's usually a man in a uniform. And that means there's a lot of assumptions behind that. If they're in a uniform, they're part of a military. If they're part of a military, they're part of a nation state's force, governmental force. They go to war because of politics. They're motivated by patriotism. That's our assumption. When we look at war in the 21st century, it's very different out there right now. It's not just men, it's of course women, but it's also children. One of my previous books was on child soldiers. There's more than 300,000 child soldiers out there. The organizations that people fight in are not just nation state militaries. In many ways, the US military is kind of like the last of the Jedi. Look at who we are fighting against. It's insurgent groups, terrorist groups. And then also look at who's fighting on our behalf. It's the private military industry. This industry has grown by immense leaps and bounds over the last 10 years. It's, um, you've had private military firms active in over 50 different countries on every continent but Antarctica. And there's several hundred of them operating in Iraq right now in terms of companies, in terms of numbers of personnel. By some counts, you have as much as 180,000 private military contractors on the ground there. That means there are more private military soldiers than public U.S. military soldiers. And just like in the military, they do all sorts of tasks. You've got uh, companies that handle logistics and supply trains like your Halliburtons. You got companies that do training and advisory and technical services. And you got companies at the pointy end of the spear, like uh, Blackwater uh, is one that a lot of people are probably familiar with. Um, now the challenge of this is that we didn't set up a structure for how we were going to figure out when and where it was appropriate to outsource, and then what were the rules and regulations under which they would operate. And so we've been getting, in many ways, the worst of both worlds. We haven't been getting good business deals out of it because the government hasn't been a smart client. You haven't had enough competition. You haven't had enough market fluidity. And then the flip side is, the legal structures have been very absent, and so you've had this sort of vacuum in terms of not only which laws should apply, but also a lack of will to apply them. And so the result is that contractors have been integral to the operation on the ground in Iraq. You couldn't have done it without them. But they've also been part of some of the most embarrassing incidents in Iraq, including um, Abu Ghraib or the Nisor Square shootings. Mm -hmm.